equations. We're supposed to find uh, all non-constant functions satisfying the following functional equality. Now, that just means you can't cheat with something like f of x equals zero, or which is always going to be true, or f of x equals two, because that I think that would always work out in most cases. But anyway, we want to do something slightly more challenging. So here's here's our condition. It's I'm not even going to say it, but uh, one thing we do have is the composition of the function with itself on the right hand side, which allows us to make this assumption that the solution function is going to be linear. Now, um, when this was done on Michael Penn's channel, he he assumed it was a mapping from uh, the integers to the integers, and he did a lot of numerical analysis and, and got got the solution. But I claim that let's let's just assume that f is going to be a polynomial. It, it doesn't look like f could be a rational function just from the form of this, right? The form of this, there's no way f could be a rational function. We don't see any radicals present, so it's um, it's very unlikely any kind of transcendental or exponential radical function is possible. So we can I'm going to assume that if f is a polynomial, it has to be degree one or it has to be in this form linear. And the reason just gets down to the fact that let's say f was, let's say this f right here was degree two, right? Well, then when you squared a degree two uh, polynomial, you're gonna get a degree four polynomial. So you would have a degree four uh, x term, right? An x term with power four on this side, you would only have an x term power squared. So because of, of a degree conflict, the only way a polynomial can be a, a, a solution to this would be if it's linear, okay? So that's the claim, I'm gonna stick by that. Now, so I'm gonna go ahead and X and Y are getting used. I'm gonna just use the letter W as a dummy variable to avoid any confusion. So we're gonna assume that the, the solution to this is in the, is linear in the form of MW plus B. Now y'all, I won't, I won't talk you through every bit of this, but you can see what I've done right here. This part right here is the left-hand side of the equation, right? It's the left-hand side of the equation. And I just simply applied this all the way through. And rather than talk you all the way through it, I've double checked it. So uh, we, we, I won't talk you through all of that. Now, uh, also, this is the right-hand side. This is the right-hand side of this equation, right? All right, so uh, I've done left-hand side first, right-hand side second gotten expressions all in terms of this linear function, all right? Now, the very next line that you see is just, I'm gonna be equating these two expressions. So I, I can't keep all this on one screen, so I'm gonna equate this expression right here, okay, which is just the left-hand side with this expression right here, which is just the right-hand side, all right? So let's move along. Now I go through all of this, folks, and again, rather than talk you through it, this the basic idea is to equate the coefficients. All right, so I said everything you just saw on the last page um, equal to each other, and then I did the standard thing you do with polynomials is you equate the coefficients. And so we kind of got overkill right here. We got m is equal to m squared. Now that would tell you that, uh, that let's see, just m would have to be equal to one. M couldn't be equal to minus one because minus one squared is one, right? So this statement right here, you know, doesn't really do much. So we can conclude that m is equal to one just simply from equating the coefficients right here. Now with m equal to one, uh, we're, right here we are equating the constant terms. If you wanna check back there, we are equating the constant terms. And with m equals one, that implies b equals one. And so this is our solution right here. Uh, it's the, the f is is one times. You, you can use x, whatever letters you want. I just use w to avoid confusion. But it's the linear function x plus one with very little numerical calculations going on. And this holds for all real numbers, not just integers. It probably holds for complex numbers too. So anyway, I, I think this is, is is another approach to to the uh, to the functional equation presented on, on Michael Penn's channel.